Hello, welcome back to the channel. So, no special project today, but a series of little things that I need to get done around the garden. And the first thing I'm gonna start off with is planting or up-potting some sweet basil. I've never grown sweet basil before. I've always grown Genovese basil. To me, it looks the same. Maybe it tastes different. I don't know, let me pluck a leaf. Yeah, it does taste a little sweeter. Huh, who'd have thunk it? Okay, anyways, I'm going to pop these up into uh, slightly larger containers. They're in seed starting mix now. The larger containers will have uh, some potting mix in them. And then hopefully in the next few days, I will be able to put them into the ground. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be getting a delivery of uh, some wood. So I'll be able to build another raised bed. And then in that raised bed, I will do tomatoes. I have Rutgers tomatoes that need to be planted up. I have uh, cherry bell tomatoes that need to be planted up cucumbers and these basils can go in that bed as well perhaps even some other items as well so we'll see when we get to that point but for now let's get to i'm not going to i'll just show you how i do a few of them because i'm not going to bore you with me planting all of them up but first i'm going to let's say take a tray out now i planted these in cow pots which are biodegradable sort of cardboard pots, but they're actually made out of compressed, aged, sterilized cow poo poo. Yep, that's right, I said cow poo poo. So I'm gonna, though they're already starting to fall apart because they're pretty wet and they're breaking down, which is good. I'm just gonna take this knife and uh, cut them apart because if I try to tear them apart, they just may totally disintegrate on me which they're already starting to do, which is fine. Oopsie. Now, if I already had the wood for the raised bed, what I would simply do at this point is take these seedlings, maybe leave them outside for, for a few days to start hardening off, and then I would turn around and stick them directly into the ground. But since I don't have that wood and I may not have that wood for a few days, if not a week, we're just gonna pot these up. It is a bit windy here today, so if you catch some wind noise, I do apologize. I'm just going to put some, I don't know if you can see, and I don't know if the camera will focus, but there's already roots growing through the pots, which is good. It's what's supposed to happen. And I'm actually going to tear away a bit of the pot here. There we go. And I'm going to Stick the thing in, making a terrible mess all over my bench. And I'm just gonna put some potting soil around the edges. This may not be the best way to do this. There may be better ways. Again, I'm a novice gardener. If you're new to the channel, I'm not an expert nor a pro, nor do I claim to be one. I have not stayed at a Holiday Inn Express, so there you go. One potted up sweet basil, ready to be watered. And like I said, hopefully in a few days, maybe a week, I'll be able to pot, uh, plant them out into a raised bed. I'll also put these outside for now to start hardening off. They'll go into my cold frame, which isn't necessary because of the cold right now. But since it is so windy and these things have been in a garage, not harmed by or brushed by wind, I'll put them in the cold frame it breaks the wind so they don't get blown around as much yet they still have time to harden off to the wind and the sun and i'm just simply putting a little bit of um, potting soil i'm using potting soil i could probably use something heavier but i'm choosing to use potting soil at this moment i put a little potting soil into the bottom of the pot i tuck in the potting soil around the plug here cow pot want to make sure you don't have any air gaps because if you do real simple the roots just won't go there and the next one's done 
and I'll do just one more to bore you. A little bit of soil on the bottom. There we go. Boom. So I put the pot, the cow pot, into the plastic pot here. Tuck the soil in around the cow pot. Make sure you fill in the gaps so you don't have any air. I don't know if you can hear the seagulls. They're all excited. And that's it. So I'm gonna do that for the next uh, nine, 10, 11, 12 that I have. I'll put them again in the cold frame to harden off. In the meantime, why don't I take you to the next project? If you're new to gardening, like many other hobbies, you can find that there's a cost to it, like anything else. If you've watched me or others on YouTube, we probably use the word compost a lot. And really all that is, is just rotted down organic material. Your flowers, your grass, uh, your kitchen scraps, not cooked of course, that's a whole nother thing. Eggshells, uh, shavings from carrots, cucumbers, potatoes, uh, stray pieces of lettuce, the lettuce core. You can throw all that into the compost pile, it'll all rot down. And when all that rots down, it essentially turns into what we call compost. And all that is is just a rich, fertile mix of organic material. You can supplement that with shredded cardboard, shredded paper. You could put the cow pots that you've used for your seedlings that you don't need or that the seedlings didn't grow in, throw them in there. Your old potting mix, throw that in there. So if you've had a pot on the front stoop for a few years, probably a good idea to refresh that soil. Well, what do you do with the old soil? You'd throw it in your compost. It'll all mix together with all that organic material that you've all put in there and it'll all create this wonderful material that you can then use for a variety of purposes. You could use it to make new potting mix. You can use it uh, to top off your raised beds. You can use it, if it's in a rough state, you could use it as mulch. So what I mean by rough state is it hasn't fully broken down. So there's still, you know, you can still see all that grass maybe in there and maybe some twigs or leaves that just hasn't fully broken down. It's almost there, but not quite. You could use that as a mulch. And all that process is done through um, nature. And basically you can dump it into a bin and you can let it sit there. Maybe six months to a year, depending upon where you live, maybe two years, and it'll eventually break down into compost. You can turn around and you can buy a um, mechanical tumbler. So you put the stuff into the tumbler and then you turn it every, let's say, week. You give it one turn. And essentially it takes everything and it just flips it upside down, adds air to it. In this case, in my case, I have a three bin system. It's not perfected yet. I'm still building it as it were, but in bin number one, that's where I dump everything essentially. And really that's getting a little full and it's gonna to need to be dumped into bin number two. Bin number two should be a rougher material and then bin number three should be pretty much the finished compost, maybe in that rough state that I just mentioned you could use for mulch. I'm not quite there yet. Uh, and one of the reasons is because of the weather. The other reason is lack of moisture and or rain. It hasn't rained significantly, but that doesn't mean that there aren't processes happening behind me. What I have here, I'll walk a little closer to the camera here, is a temperature thermometer. And basically you stick that in the ground and this one tells you what it's um, good for. You know, warm, ideal, hot. So the hotter it is, the more it burns off those weed seeds. But if it gets a little too hot, it could kill off a lot of the bacteria that it's actually working to break down your mulch, your compost as it were. So I'm actually gonna stick this in each bin and I'll show you that in a second here and I'll show you the temperatures. So as you can see, bin one is sitting between warm and ideal. Maybe that's due to the lack of um, rain or moisture or maybe the mixture that's in here right now. Now bin two, I just started to get, sticking the thermometer into and it was a little tough, uh, a few inches down. So this is primarily made up of grass clippings and pine, pine straw. And you can see that is on the ideal side right now. I will be flipping this today, so it'll let air into here and uh, fluffing up, fluff up the material below to let that get air, because it's one of the things you need. You need moisture and air. Now this has been three. This one also needs to be turned because I can't stick the thermometer that far down. And as you can see, it's moving towards the warm side, still in the ideal zone, but again, probably needs to be flipped and moisture needs to be added to this. Some days, if you come out here early in the morning, it's cool enough, 
and the compost pile is working as it should, being nice and hot. When you go to flip this, you'll actually see the steam raise, rising up and you can actually feel the heat. Now, because it hasn't rained here a lot lately, pretty much at all, this bed is pretty dry. So I will actually take a hose to this, give it a good soaking. Now, you don't need 100 gallons of water. You just need to keep it damp, as it were. And again, nature will do the rest. It'll rot it down. If you flood it and turn it into a muddy mess, then certain bacteria and or insect life and or whatever else decides to play in the compost won't play. Okay, so there you have it. I uh, did some turning. I talked to you about compost. I'm really not going to do... Uh, bore you with a compost video at this time. There's a whole bunch of other science stuff in in it that I'd have to go and research because I don't know everything. But honestly, there are a ton of YouTube videos out there about composting. So if you want, just go up to the search bar in YouTube or Google, type in compost or how to make compost. You will have more information than you know what to do with. But the basics is it's organic material. Again, kitchen scraps, grass, leaves, plants, old plants, old potting soil, anything like that. You put it all into the, into a pile, it rots down, and then it gives you something wonderful that you can then use out in the garden. So let's get to planting. Okay, we're back at the potting table again. And I did say I was gonna start planting. What I'm gonna be planting is seed. What I have is two different types of lavender. One is English and the other one is Munstead. I think I prefer, well, I know I prefer the English it seems to have more flowers per stem than the Munstead. Both are perennial in this area, but I am starting them kind of late. If I wanted to put them out now in the garden or in the next month in the garden to have them be useful in the garden or look pretty, fill pots, be edging borders, I would have started them back in, let's say, January, February. It's you generally you start them eight to 10 weeks before frost. I don't care about that right now in this, this year because I'm still building the garden. I'm still building the structure of the garden. I think I would put these lavenders in a combination of maybe put them in pots or borders because I think that's where they would do the best or look the best. But I don't have either the rose garden prepped out yet so far as structure. I'm still playing with the design or the flower, flower garden where I would probably put these as well thought comes to mind right now in the flower garden when you walk in I could have literally two rows one on either side of the path of lavender growing and it would make nice uh, edging along the path and of course lavender smells wonderful you can do a bunch of things with lavender it's considered a herb uh, people make soaps out of them they use them for a variety of purposes a few years back um, I used it to help relieve some stress. I would stuff a bunch of cut lavender into a little um, cloth bag and I'd have it near my um, bed at night and I would smell the lavender and of course it's a relaxing smell. So it would help me relax a bit. So, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially after a stressful day of work. So let's get to planting. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill these cow, cow pots up again with some potting soil. This potting soil mix that I'm using from Gardener's Supply it is very light and fluffy. It'll also help prevent, help me in the fact that I won't have to transfer these as quickly or as soon as. I'm going to pot these up. Sorry, windy dust in the eye. I, I won't have to uh, up pot these as soon as I would as if they were in seed starting mix. And if I get to plant them out this year, so be it. If I don't, and they don't go out until the, into the garden until next year, even better because they can stay over the winter. Again, they're perennial here, but in case of a hard frost or something, I'd bring them in under the grow lights for, for a few weeks or until the frost passed, and then I'd put them out. But I don't think in this, in zone 8A, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So let's get to planting. And we're sim simply gonna fill these cells, fill these cow pots. Knock off the excess, 
the soil will settle in these, so if they look a little full, that's fine. First I'll do the English lavender. I've never grown lavender from seed before. I've always, uh, I've either bought it in the store or I've done um, cuttings. You can also grow lavender from cuttings. Now these are pretty fine. I don't know if you can see that in my hand. They, uh, they're smaller than ants. So what I'm going to do is they're trying to put one or two in each cell. I'm just going to sprinkle them and try to do this before the next gust of wind comes and blows these seeds out of my hand. And as these grow up, I can turn around and thin them. And essentially what that means is I'm just going to take out weak ones and in the end, or ones I don't want, and in the end, I will be left with just one plant per cell. I do have some leftovers, so I'll just seal up this package. Move on to the uh, Munstead. Of course, I'm gonna lab label the tray so I know what's growing in it. And the instructions on the package say that you should just add the seed, you know, add the seed and then just firm it in, which is what I'm gonna do. So that's why I'm just taking my fingers and pressing down to the soil. Figure August, and then the, I don't believe we start having a frost until probably, I think it's late, mid to late November, maybe. So there's plenty of time for these to grow. Again, maybe I'll get these out into the yard this year, maybe not. Maybe they'll go into the yard next year and I'll just leave them under the grow lights over the course of the winter to continue to grow. So, label, water, and then put on a shelf to grow. And now let's get on with the next thing. Okay, I once again took a little break for lunch, cool off. It was getting quite hot out. Um, so the sun is now behind some clouds, which I'm okay with. And I'm, I'm on the side of the house that in this point in the day is in semi shade. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. It's actually, it gets into full shade. It only gets morning sun and then it gets uh, afternoon shade for the rest of the day. Hence the reason I have so many shade loving plants here. So I'm going to be planting up a bunch of plants which have been sitting in pots a little too long, some of them. And I will go over each one briefly as I dig the holes and stick them in. So let's get to planting. So the first one I'm going to do, and forgive me the whole head chopping off thing, but uh, the first one I'm going to do is white summer love agapanthus. Now agapanthus, again in growing zone 7a, loves the sun. Here, I don't know. So I'm going to turn around, and I don't remember the spec. I'll put the specs on this uh, screen someplace. So let's. I'm going to stick this one. Since it does, I believe, get about three foot tall, I'm gonna be planting this towards the back of the border. And of course, I will turn around and <clears throat> mulch, obviously, all of this and water everything in after I get done planting it. It's amazing I still find pieces of cardboard here, uh, considering that I dug, put the cardboard down, I think, back in February. Uh, if I'm wrong, go back and correct me, leave a comment below. I will take the tag and temporarily slap it there. There we go. This one's already putting out some nice roots. So I'll just turn around and drop that right in. Actually, I want to add some more dirt to this. There we go. Oop, there, oop, up there. Ah, yeah, back in there. Push, push, there we go. Boom. Now the next plant, I do have another agapanthus, but I think the next plant I'm going to do is a hosta called Patriot Hosta. Now hostas generally do prefer full shade, but I've, as I've discovered from my sum, sum and substance, which you can't see off screen, and my Empress Wu, they do tolerate some sun, which is great. I'm gonna be planting up this Patriot Hosta now. And according to the tag, since I have it in front of me, 12 to 24 inches tall, 36 inches wide. Has a purple flower. I think most uh, hostas have purple flowers. When we had, during the winter time, we had uh, a lot of rain and this side of the house flooded somewhat badly. Everything I've done in this bed, I've tried to raise it up a little bit. When I plant the plants, I try to plant them a little higher. Now when you say flood, I'm only talking like an inch or two, but if a plant sits in too much water for too long, it's not good. If you uh, have ever grown a hosta or you like hostas, um, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what hostas you like to grow or 
Have you ever even heard of Patriot? I've never heard of Patriot up until now. Not sure why it's called Patriot. It's a variegated Hasta. And the last one then I'm gonna do in this little area will be the blue summer law of Agapanthus. So similar to the white summer law of Agapanthus, except, well, it's blue. There we go. Stick the sign on it. Blue summer law of Agapanthus. Hopefully I do see some beautiful flowers from these guys later in the year. If you subscribe to the channel, then you too can see those beautiful flowers, <sighs> hopefully if they bloom this year. Let's go on to the next group. Okay, so the next three that we're going to do are plants that I've tried to grow in the past and have failed miserably at, and I forgive my, forgive my head for me getting in the way. The space is a little cramped. I don't have a cameraman, and this was sort of the best angle I could come up with at the moment. But these cans that I'm messing with are bluants and lungwort. I will not be planting these today. What I will be planting is trillium. Now I've tried growing these from seed and I've also tried growing these as actual plants and I've failed sadly in both instances, but I'm gonna give it a whirl now. Now trillium, uh, I don't know if you can see that, throws up a nice little flower. This will turn, it's called trillium because it has three leaves. This will turn bright white eventually. Gets 12 to 14 inches tall, takes up about 12 inches of space. Uh, blooms mid to late summer. And I know Trillium prefer a little more dry shade, so I'm not even gonna dig a hole. I'm just going to pop these out of the pots and then mound them up as it were. Get that first one there, do that there. And then last but not least, there you go. One, two, three, three Trilliums. Trilliums have three leaves. I did it in a grouping of three. That's pretty cool. Again, sorry for my big head getting in the way. The space is getting cramped. Uh, this is a blue zebra primrose. Now this guy, I'm also thinking I'm just gonna mound straight up. And it does prefer full shade. I don't know if you can actually even see that flower now. Lovely little purple flower. It's looking a little sad now because it got a little too dry. Again, small pot, doesn't hold a lot of water. And again, I left it in the pot a little too long, but now hopefully if it's in the ground and I water it in well with all this lovely garden soil, it'll turn around and uh, start popping back to life. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is another agapanthus, but this one's store-bought. Store Big words. This one is Lily of the Nile Ever Sapphire. Wow, say that three times fast. It's gonna produce a lovely purple and white flower eventually. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if agapanthus can be divided or how they get divided or propagated, but this one looks like it really could. Like I could split three plants out of this. I don't know. And then of course I'm gonna mulch all this heavily, um, mulch all this heavily and we'll see what grows. There you have it. I have potted some basil planted lavender seeds, and then I started planting some more stuff that was in pots into the ground. Those pots that had plants in them will now be used to allow me to up-pot other th things. I have more, I have dill that needs to be up-potted. I have, I think there's an echinacea or two. There's other plants that need to be up-potted, up-potted, apologies. Plus next week, allegedly, maybe, possibly Michigan bulb might actually send me my delivery of, I don't know, a couple of dozen plants. And many of those will be small plants that will need to go into small pots. And as you can see right here in front of me, I have a new fresh shipment of all sorts of soils and composts and stuff that needs to go find a home. That's gonna be it for today. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This way you can follow along as I grow this garden. Again, I'm gardening in Eastern North Carolina on an acre and a half of property. And my eventual goal is to essentially make the entire acre and a half pretty much all garden. No lawn or very little lawn, mostly garden. It's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna take a lot of effort and it's gonna take some time. So please subscribe, join me right here. If you don't follow me on Instagram, give a follow on Instagram. I'll put the link right about here-ish, I think. I post up pictures there that you don't often see here on YouTube. 
it's another way of following along as to what's going on or get a close-up of some of the flowers. Sometimes once, once stuff really starts to flower or bloom or grow, I try to take close-up pictures. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all the new subscribers. If you want to help the channel out, go tell a friend, family, loved one, grumpy old guy across the street that I have this goofy YouTube channel. So help the channel grow and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.